This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. To be elite in their fields. So welcome to the training camp, buddy. Welcome to Team Beast. Let me tell you something. I know you're listening to this after the fight, but as I sit down and record it, I don't know what's going to happen. This is like a training diary. I'm really taking you behind the scenes here. I know I'm going to face setbacks, and I know I'm going to have little wins. But everything that you're about to hear is 100% me and 100% authentic. I'll let you in on a little secret. I had done precisely zero boxing training before I signed on for this fight. So you could say I had a mountain in front of me. In this audiobook, I'll take you with me on my journey from total novice to professional showdown in the ring. Along the way, I'll tell you about my life growing up in Stoke. I'll share with you what it takes to smash world records, and I'll let you in on how much blood, sweat, and tears it took me to win the world's strongest man. And we're both going to find out how much blood, sweat, and tears it takes to go from strongman to boxing in two short years. What does it take to be strong? Over the course of this audiobook, you're going to find out. But here's a little spoiler for you. It ain't just pulling weights in the gym or hitting 12,000 calories a day or staying hydrated. Sure, you have to do all that stuff. But to reach the top, there's another kind of strength that you have to work on. That is strength of mind. And it can only be developed through time and experience. As I share my story with you, you'll begin to understand how my mindset was formed and the role it has played in getting me to where I am today. I am living, breathing, sweating, swearing proof that it is possible to achieve the impossible. One of my earliest memories, and this is no bullshit, one of my earliest memories is watching the world's strongest man with my parents and brothers in the room. And I said, loud as anything, I'm going to be the world's strongest man one day. What do you think happened? Of course, the whole room erupted. My older brother's both slapping me on the head saying, oh, shut up, Eddie. How's a kid from Stoke-on-Trent going to become the world's strongest man? Impossible. Impossible, Eddie. Impossible. That's the worst thing you can say to me. That word gets my back right up. When I hear it, something wakes up inside me. I've always found a way forward when I had the will to find it. When I hear the I word, it just makes me want to go out and prove people wrong. I don't want to stick it to people in a nasty way, but I do want to show them that it is possible to achieve amazing things in life. It is possible to do things that everyone else says can't be done. Now, there's a reason some people believe some things are impossible. That's because they've butted up against the boundaries time and time again. It requires something special in order to break through what other people see as limits and push beyond them. I should know. It takes dedication. It takes sacrifice. It takes commitment, consistency, and self-belief. Those five qualities, dedication, sacrifice, commitment, consistency, belief, they've been the cornerstones to everything I've achieved. And I wasn't supposed to achieve anything. I left school when I was 14. I was a truck mechanic till I was 27. Absolutely nothing wrong with leaving school at 14 or being a truck mechanic. School weren't for me, and I learned a lot of life skills fixing up trucks. All that being said, I always had a vision for something more for myself and for my family. I knew in my heart that I could achieve the things I dreamed of. However, any bootkeeping stoke would have laughed me out of the shop if I had put a bet on myself that I would break the world record deadlift and win the world's strongest man. I got into Strongman around 2007. Ironically, at the urging of my brothers, the same ones taking the piss out of me when I was five years old watching the competition on the box. I'd been knocking about the scene for a while, and I knew if I was to close the gap between myself and the freaks like Sadrunas, Brian Shaw and Harfour, then I needed to go professional. It was 2015 when a combination of me backing myself and circumstance allowed me to finally do it. It was in turning professional that I felt I finally had an opportunity to land the prize I'd longed for since I was a kid. The world's strongest man. One thing I figured out very fast was that being a professional was not actually about being paid. 
although, of course, it's always nice to earn money from something I love doing. You might at this point ask, Eddie, 